Hello, welcome to Layback with Betfair Season 2. I'm Tom Haylock, joined by Dave Strelaw, the Sultan. How are you, mate? You good? Yeah, I'm well, Tommy. Good to be here. Season 2 and the first Group 1 of the season in Victoria with the Memsey Stakes. So, big card at Caulfield and looking forward to dissecting it with you, mate. Yeah, we're getting out to Caulfield, both of us, for different reasons. So, yeah. it's going to be a good day. 18 degrees, um, a soft 6 probably, a few showers around during the week, obviously. So, um, yeah, it'll be a wet Caulfield. Are we expecting the track to play well? I think so. The rail's back to the true position. So with that soft range, they might chop the inside, but I'd expect that it plays quite fairly. And although um, some guys at Betfair think it's going to be 40 and, and windy, <laughs> I don't think it'll dry out that much. 18's, 18's yeah. perfect racing weather. Yeah, we might put Carl in the lab in for that conversation <laughs> yesterday. Um, well, speaking of lab in, let's dive, dive straight into it. Why not? I want to see what's been grinding your gears. I haven't seen you for a, a few months. No, well, there's so. been heaps that grinds my gears, mate, but I'll just kick off with a couple of... Smaller things. So yes, firstly, the so Very Elegant went and ran in France. Obviously, good track. The The shape of the race was against her. But, you know, she mo she's going to go around for one more, whether or not she's done or not. I think she just ran so well in the Melbourne Cup that she just couldn't recover from mm. it. But as soon as you get on Twitter after she went over there and failed, you just see all the poms and all the overseas racing people saying, like, Winx is no good. <laughs> or that's that's the is line that yeah, that's right. the line they draw. Like yep. so one of our middle distance runners goes over there and fails with like absolute excuses. Clearly she's not at her best and, and she's gone over there past her prime. And they draw a line through it and say, Well, because she's come over and failed, Winx was no good because she never came over and raced against the best. Well, she put a hole in Ben Battle. Yeah, true. So exactly right. What do you make of very elegant? Just quickly. It can't take long. Like yeah. is she gone? There were excuses in terms of an, an analysis. Very slowly run so, race. Yeah. Sectionals were okay. Yeah. I'll see one. What about that camera angle? It looked like they were doing about 95 k's an hour. <laughs> Lay bin. Yeah. <laughs> um, your second one? You got another one for us or two? Yeah, I, I got one more. So just just on a football perspective here, look, I, I don't profess to be Alistair Clarkson. Okay. <laughs> you but did got, off air. I got enough knowledge <laughs> of the game that you know a good player when you see him. So the, the ignorance, as soon as I see someone say, Nick Dacos only gets cheap stats across half back. Oh. I just know that you have absolutely no idea about the game of football. The guy's an absolute Rolls Royce. He's a superstar. Watch him at ground level all the time. And his decision making and ball use is just completely elite. So if, if you've ever said that, then <laughs> I the just understand bin. that you have absolutely no idea about <laughs> AFL footy. So you can get in the lay bin. Comment here says ignorant. Well, it's just igno it's football <laughs> ignorance. It's football ignorance. How the pies do it, all right, mate? You pretty well, mate. You're up and about. You <laughs> yeah, are pretty up and well. about. Um, pretty well. Speaking of footy, I've got a couple for the lay in. Sunday's AFL draw, and I don't know if you're with me here, but you can't have the Hawks and Dogs playing and overlapping with the Carlton Collingwood game. Be flexible, AFL. I'd loved would have loved to see them both play at the same time, so we didn't know whether if Hawthorne beat the Dogs. We wouldn't know. Mm. So Carlton and Collingwood have been playing, not knowing the result of that match would have been interesting, but. People, dog supporters, hawk supporters are watching that game and they miss the first 15 minutes, 20 minutes of Carlton Collingwood. Yeah. Come just, on, AFL. I know. It's all about going into the news. For some reason, they want everything to go into the news. Yeah. I was filthy about that because I want it to be Friday night because I was working on Sunday Ooh. and I couldn't go. And it was it was actually pretty heartbreaking, to be honest. But, That's no good, mate. You're but it was, a, the finals? It, was, it was a good result. Yeah, I'll be there. Yep. I'll be there. Yep. Um, another couple, just quickly, missing a phone call. Calling straight back and them not answering. It's gr really grinds my gears. Yeah, it makes no sense. What are you doing? <laughs> grinds my gears. Um, how have you lost your phone in that? <laughs> in, in that, that 10 time seconds frame? where I yeah. missed a phone call. Yeah. That's just rude. Um, futures markets, they're in the lab in too. Oh, That's why you bet with betfair.com.au. There's 40 horses under $20 in most of these futures markets. So there you go. Anyway. And sometimes some of them are retired. <laughs> That's extraordinary. Horses that aren't even in the, the country that aren't coming. Yeah. Like, yeah. <laughs> yeah, anyway, we move on. Let's get to Caulfield. We're touching on races five, six, seven, eight, and nine. And then we touch on the San Domenico at Rose Hill, the feature there. What a race that is. We'll touch on that a bit later. Um, we've got some education stuff coming up. We've got the weekend wash up as well. So big show to get through. Let's get stuck into race five, the Group 3 McNeil Stakes, 1,200 metres. Um, we're doing things a little bit differently here. We're not arguing one horse, but uh, I'll get your opinion on the race and we'll just dissect a few runners. Um, Aft Cabin, the favourite, um, you with or against him? I, I'm not with him. And I think there's a couple of pertinent points you can make to say why you could be against him. I'm certainly not going to be laying him because I know he's he's run a massive figure last start at Sandown 
that is dominant over this field. So like the, the way I do my races, I'm scared of runners like that, that have posted yes. a big figure. But in terms of his setup, well, he produced that big figure going to 1400 meters. He didn't win first up at Warwick Farm over 1200 meters. So he drops back to 1200 meters at Caulfield this week. First time Caulfield. Barrier three, Jamie's an outstanding jockey. She often has a great ability at being able to settle them off the fence, even if they've they've drawn low, but going to need a really good ride because if he ends up on the fence and back, yes, there's going to be good tempo, but with that set up, back in trip, low draw, it's going to be a wet track again. I know he got through Sandown okay, but it's it's not a setup I want to dive into. So at the $3, I thought you could make a case to be against him somewhat. I'm I'm leaning to being with him. Um, I couldn't lay him as well. Uh, I'm, I'm with him. Now, I agree. Back to 1,200 is a huge concern for me. But the main danger is Dormier. It's a, it's a case of the two-year-old form in the autumn up against some fresh blood. And we've seen it in the rosebud that the fresh blood have actually leapfrogged the two-year-olds. Um, horses that have come through that golden slipper, they've had Queen of the Ball go, go no good, Revolutionary Miss no good, Lady Laguna not great, Sweet Ride not great, um, Dormier obviously the horse we're talking about that was fourth in a, a golden slipper. So I'm leaning to the fresh blood, up up and going, fitness. Um, Af Cabin was enormous last start, just needs luck from that barrier. Yeah, well, he looks a guinea's horse. So that's why the, the back end trip. I could make a little case for number nine, Lincoln Squares. Jumped out a couple of times really well. Put an absolute hole in Maximilius, who went over a beat See You in Heaven in Adelaide subsequently. Had a couple of nice jump outs. Blake Shin on from a wide barrier. Had a big price. But uh, yeah, not keen to get overly involved in the race. But wary of the favourite. But a couple of things are against. Yeah, Lincoln Square, Square good uh, debut winner. Good racing pattern. Very slow time last start, so had every chance. So mm. it went close to 11, 11 lengths slower than benchmark to the 600 there. But Lincoln Square, your play if you were to have one? Yeah. And laying AFCAB in the favourite potentially? Yeah. Yeah. Fair enough. Let's move on to race six, the 11,000 stakes, which is an interesting name. Um, and we've got the favourite here. Well, a couple of favourites, but we're both siding with one here. And you can go first, mate. You're pretty keen on one. I am. I'm keen on generation. And, and with that extra rain that's come, it's made me more keen because his setup is, there's a lot to like about it. Mm. So he's had the two jump outs, like one jump out in a trial, whereas a lot of the dangers have just had the one. His most recent trial at Cranbourne was absolutely outstanding. It was in it was brilliant, wasn't super it? fast time. And and just walked straight past away game. It was a nice mare. Yeah, and she had the blinkers on in that trial. Mm. Apparently, they've sparked her right up as well. So went straight past her. The time was a full second faster than Star Patrol on the same morning. But if you go dive even deeper, he's home in 21.30 and 10.70 for his last 200 metres. So he's wound right up. He gets a beautiful map to track the speed. And we look at some of the dangers, Star Patrol, well, they put down that soft seven track in the Crestwick as the reason why it didn't go up to expectations. Well, it's going to be a soft seven at six at best yes. on Saturday. In the boat, soft track query, first up, only one jump out. So a horse that goes forward and likes to bowl along, you need to be fit. And that jump out was a thousand metres at Warnable on the synthetic track. And a lot of horses for Lindsay Smith that jumped out really well through that set of heats Went to Warnable first up on a heavy track on Tuesday. I know they're a different caliber horse, yep. but yep. went poorly against market expectations as well. So there's there's some holes that you can punch in, some dangers, but I can't punch any holes in generation. I'm with you there. Draws perfectly. Mark Zara on board. First up, one first up 1,200 metres at Caulfield last campaign. Only beat a small field there, but um, it just sets up perfectly. Mm. So I'm with you there. A horse that comes off a Queensland run in the winter as well. Uh, I'm leaning to a lot of these in early spring. So uh, he the residual fitness, mate. And they get the sun on their back, mate. We're all yeah. better for a trip away. So Well, how much more do you like life when it's summer? Oh, exactly. And daylight savings. Horses like, would be happier. They're like humans. Horses. Oh, I got go up to Darwin Absolutely. for Darwin Cup, get some sun on my back. and Yeah. yeah you come back happier and you race well. So you get you get pretty burnt, wouldn't you? <laughs> well, what's, your, what's your pigment like? Coming from you, mate. <laughs> oh, geez, you're, you're in the well. Labor. Speaking of that, I want to lay in the boat. Yes, I, I, he needs to match his peak at these weights. He needs to do it first up on a wet track, off only the one jump out, which was on the synthetic over a thousand meters at Warnable. So. I don't like his setup this weekend whatsoever. So, so we're both back in generation. I'm leaning the same as you. I, I'd probably lay in the boat as well if I was laying a horse in the race. Um, but we're both a generation. Dave's keen to lay in the boat. Let's get to race seven, the Group 3 Cochrane Stakes. Um, Passive-aggressive, a fascinating horse first up, undefeated, absolutely flying. 
Um, you can go first again here because I think we disagree a little bit, but you're with passive aggressive. I am. Hey, I don't like, I don't sort of condone like aggressive, violent <laughs> behavior, but I don't like <laughs> anything good. that I don't like passive aggression. It's really annoying. Oh, it's the but worst trade. Yeah. It, it stinks. Is. But I do like passive aggressive the as horse. a horse. Yeah. Yes. And she's undefeated. She's four from four for a reason because she goes forward, she raises on speed and she can kick off any tempo. Look at her winning the crest week was off a fast tempo and a her close off that fast tempo was absolutely outstanding. The market loves her in all of her starts. And I like, she's only had 67 days off into this. So the one jump out's no concern with that sort of break. It was she, a good jump out. It was, it was outstanding. She was home 2184, 11.04, absolutely untouched. So she goes forward. The stable are in good form. So over the career, 11.8%, but nine from the last 50 at 18.4%. So there's a lot to like about her and, that residual fitness on side gets through the going. I, I, I find it hard to punch a hole in her, and I'm keen to have her on side. She is really hard to punch a hole in, as you said. Any concern Caulfield first time off Flemington runs? Nah, because she her racing pattern. Is she's that... she's been professional in the past. Like I know it was Werribee on debut. It was around a bend, one by six A's down, one yeah, at Pakenham. Yeah, she beat nothing. But yeah, well, what do you got to do when you're? <laughs> She's yeah. running time, but packing him. Major strip at one stage in his career beat nothing. <laughs> Just playing devil's advocate here, mate. Yeah, okay. I'm not pa- going to try and fire. Packing him, big track, <laughs> yeah. long straight. Flemington, Flemington wins. So they're her wins, obviously down yeah. the straight at Flemington. So she's got to go well, around the bend. Geordie Childs noted that out of the last Flemington win in the Crest Week, that she waited for him down the straight. So out of you, you take help. something away from that, a bend actually might help. Yeah, very yeah. true. Um, I think Ostope can run really well, trialed the house down, probably my play in the race if I'm playing. I'm leaning to laying passive aggressive just at the price. Mm -hmm. Um, I think there's a good field. Passive aggressive's hardest race to date. And just 245, 250 um, seems skinny enough for me. So um, I'll probably play Isotope at the odds. Got that Queensland prep again, um, residual fitness as passive aggressive has, but just at price maybe against passive aggressive there. Thoughts on Isotope? Yeah, well, she's a nice horse. It's (laughs) it's, it's a... uh... A market danger, of course, and yeah. and the market has respected her throughout her whole career, and she sprints well fresh. So easy to see why you like her. The one that can't win is Graceful Girl. Wide, yeah, you don't like. Well, gets wide, back. wide barrier gets too top far back. sixty kegs. Yeah. First up off off a long layoff. Caulfield first time got an absolute pearler from Willie Pike to win the the Group One over there. So I'd be surprised if she won. Well, she's your lane, the race, Graceful Girl. Mm. Fair enough. Let's get to the weekend wash up now. We talked about Sunday afternoon, the footy, that match. <laughs> wow. A um, couple of stats from the, the data team from Betfair. Sunday afternoon's madness. Um, weekend blues, we've named it. The blues traded as low as $1.02 in the top eight market, if you don't mind. Had 30000 traded at under $1.30 in th- throughout the season to make the top eight. So you would be I can't wipe the smile off my face hearing that, mate. Amazing. Absolute music. On on the flip side, the the Bulldogs traded as high as $29 um, throughout the year to make the top eight, and that was as recently as August 6th. So whoever got the 29. they going to get their bags packed when they go over to Perth? Oh, that's going to be interesting. Um, On Sunday alone, the Pies traded uh, $20 in play. Obviously got got the win, and Carlton traded as low as $1.04. So... Weekend Blues, that's the wash-up for this week. Um, well, races, why not? We've got the Memsey Stakes to touch on. Yeah, absolutely. What a race this is. Um, what do you make of it? I, I, I love the race in terms mm. of a, a viewing perspective. In, in terms of my way to bet on the race, that extra rain that we've had is is probably going to leave me to to stay out of it because I've if I was forced to have a bet in the race, I, I didn't mind the setup of Snap Dancer. She goes well, well with her run space. So she, she soaked up a, a decent tempo, did a fair bit of work at Eagle Farm over 1,400 metres. I know it was a mare's group one. Like This is much harder, but yep. she's yet to win at 1,400. But but her fight there was excellent. She jumped out or trialed really well. It's, geez, it's hard to get your language right. She trialed really it's well. Right. What's in, official, what's not. Yeah, yeah. in um, New South was. Wales. Yep. Yeah, behind Malkovich was the speedster, but her work through the line was excellent. Galloped at Caulfield the other day. The stable are really keen. She'll go well there because she used to be home there. So I just thought that she was the sole leader in the race as well. And, and often the Memsey is is one up on speed early in the season. So if I had to lean one way, I'd lean her way. I'm keen to lay 
a particular horse, but keen to see who you'd be with if you were having a bet. Yeah, well, let's talk about the map. I think Sap Dance, I agree. Sap Dance the leads. Tafani kicks up. Call sign Mav draws wide. Could generate some pressure out wide there. Um, and then you've got a few others um, in the mix. Uh, light Saber. Alligator Bloody forward. gets a nice run from the low draw. Probably sucks up right behind him. He does. Mm. Query on fitness. Um I have a Tommy two play in the race and mm. I'm backing the, the leader in the race and potentially a back marker. Cascadian's airborne, this horse. Yeah. Trialing like as as good as he's ever trialed. Yeah. I think he's going fantastic. Agree, Caulfield. If it was at Flemington, I'd be chips in. Yeah. Um Caulfield's a little concerned. Barrier seven gets back. We'll need a bit of luck, but he's he's airborne. I'm having something on him. Well, it was hard to miss his trial behind Animo, wasn't it? Because oh. obviously we're all watching Animo to see how he's he coming better than and Animo. This absolute <laughs> weapon comes down the outside. I think he's I think he's going as well as ever. Yeah, um, and, and that extra rain helps him too. He gets through it. Yep. The snap dancer's the other one. She's a mere in form off Queensland prep, and I've been harping on this already. Mm. Um, she will have the fitness edge, and as you said. Caulfield first up with a fitness edge, potentially on a lot of her rivals, so yep. a bigger fish to fry. We'll be surprised if she's the one here to win, right? Yeah. Because what, what are her targets? Obviously, she could run in Myers and stuff like that. Yeah. Um, but she, I reckon she's ready, well, this is ready to win. I think this is the target. Obviously, every race they get her ready for is the target because they love freshening her up and, yep. and going for big races. But, yeah, she'll certainly be more forward than some of the dangers. Correct. Um, so Tommy Two Play, Cascadia number two and number 14, Snap Dancer there. I... I could lay a few horses in this and do mm. something a bit different. Why lay one horse when you can lay two or three? So um, it obviously mitigates your risk a little bit. I could lay Elation. I think it's mm. um, too short. I could lay Alligator Blood. We'll get a nice run, but we'll also need luck by the same token. There's a few queries about the fitness of Alligator Blood first up. And I'm Thunderstruck. If I'm laying Elation, I thought Elation trial better than I'm Thunderstruck. Absolutely. Um, I'm Thunderstruck might head to a Cox Plate. Not here to win per se. So I could potentially lay all three of those and, and either have a fill up or, um, yeah, it could be yeah. a bad race. if I, I, know he's, I know he's a bit of a race day horse. I'm Thunderstruck, yes. like yep. loves the pressure and stuff. But yeah, that, that recent jump out, the blinkers on, he was, he was scrubbed right up, wasn't he? He was. Oh, and Alation I mean, went straight past him yeah, inside. Or, and, yeah, well, a good horse and, and jumping out well, Alation, but I'm against. Like, yep. particularly went up favourite. Like, I... He's beaten Hop on Harry and defining <laughs> the past too. Like Hop on Harry came to Caulfield and won, but like, yeah. come on. What like, else Hop on Harry here? A, a billion. <laughs> <laughs> so uh, he's obviously a nice horse, but group one, wait for age, first go as a four-year-old and against Harden group one, operated as an 84 rider with and 58 from, and a half kilos. And a tricky gate. Yeah. Like there's, there's heaps not to like. If you want to back him, wait, you'll get 10 bucks on the exchange. Yep. At, at least I think before jump. So that's your play in the race? If you, to, to lay elation, yeah. yeah. Yep. So laying elation for Dave there in the feature. What a race it is. Spring is definitely in the air. Um, we head to the Heatherly Stakes. This is a race I've got little to no opinion of. I find this very tricky. Um, oh, Jimmy, the bear is just a winner. And I mm. think you're against him looking at the notes here for the first time. But um, he's here to win, whereas some of these are first up. He's just a winner. He's a really hard horse to knock. So I'm intrigued to hear your... Thoughts on that? No efforts, two from three at this track and distance. Goes well fresh. Go, uh, is a uh, oh, good on-speed runner. Sets yeah. up quite nicely for races like this. Delphi as well can roll forward and up on speed. It's a, a really interesting race. A lot of these horses are here for Caulfield Cups and whatnot as well. So yeah. what do you make of the race? Well, the, there's one I'm keen to keep an eye on. I don't think she's going to be ready today, but Luna Flair. I thought her return in the Winter Championships held up badly and then Ran home the fastest last 200 metres of the race was really good. And she jumped out super behind non-conformist who was off a long layoff, but under a lot more pressure than her in the lead up in there. Cranburn jump out. But in terms of coming up favourite, he does look short enough, Jimmy the Bear. But then again, like win winners just keep winning as mm -hmm. well. And he he's obviously a winner, but you have a look at the way the race set up for him last start. Like he had the absolute perfect drop. On the lead speed, Good ride. The, the smaller field. Yeah, great ride. It, it's, it's a trickier barrier. Again today, he's he's up in class again. He's up first against, go up against listed. better class of horses, but yeah. potentially horses that aren't there to win. So it's a debate you have at this time of year. Yeah, absolutely. It's I, I can see why you could make a case against him. Like I wouldn't want to back him yep. as favourite with this setup and you know getting to the heavy track as well. But the gate's a little bit sticky. But it's one of those ones where you make a case against him. You look for the field. I I know I made a little bit of a case for Luna Flair, but I don't want to back her because she'd probably get too far back. Mm. What, how's the race going to be run? No effort goes forward. It, does she have the zip in the legs after that 
a couple of gut busters, 2,000 and then 2,400 metres. So very difficult race. I, I couldn't get involved personally. Letting that race go through the cable. We'll have yep. an idea more about track pattern and stuff as well. Yeah, by, of course. Yeah. By race nine. So that, that might have an effect. Um, one more race to touch on, Rose Hill, Rail in the True, soft five potentially. Yeah. Um, San Domenico, what a race it is. Race nine on the card, 1,100 metres. Uh, we've just touched on the golden slipper form and those two-year-olds coming through that that autumn, wet tracks and whatnot. You're with the favourite here, best of Bordeaux, and I tend to agree with you to an extent. He looks the, the horse, well, the class horse in the race off a brilliant trial. Yeah, I, I'm not going to have a bet, but if I was forced my arm to, I'd, I'd have a bet on best of Bordeaux because I thought he was enormous in the slipper. He led nearly 11 lengths faster than benchmark to the 600 and did it working wide and to stick on. Like he was only dropped on late by Fireburn who went on with it since and who's a very good wet and tracker. Fireburn hit 200 odd in play too. So yeah. Two, yeah, it's yeah. amazing. Well, copped a lovely steer from Abdullah and, but she gets through the wet tracks and he's been acquired by Coolmore since that. And he's had two trials, which has been excellent. James McDonald's been on both. We know he's got an, an affiliation with Coolmore, so he's sticking yeah. again today but he's just run around really nicely at the trials if if he can get across but he does have good early speed he's rose hill all his three runs so far have been at rose hill for for two wins and a runner up but the two at 1100 he's won you can't win two from two at 1100 at rose hill without being a speedster yep so he looks like a nice horse he's got some early speed just price worries me for him. I think he's the the horse to beat. But two dollars forty looks a bit short and or short enough from Barry Nine. If, if he drew Barry Three, I'd probably take the two dollars forty. Yep. Yeah. But I'm a little bit worried about what kicks up underneath him. Because... And we saw Rose Hill a fortnight ago had to be fenced in run. It was yeah. completely well. The, ridiculous the, the, track. That's seven back to true this week. Yeah. With a little bit of give. So I wouldn't. Should I wouldn't okay. set up for it being on like fence on rails rails in run this weekend. No. Yep. I, yeah. I tend to agree. So. Yep. Um, best of Bordeaux, the danger, but I'm with the Tuno here, and this is a horse that does a lot wrong, so I'm worried. I just think he's the most talented horse in the race. He's got a completely different form guide. I'm kind of penning the two-year-old autumn form um, and looking for differences. We've seen it with Spacewalk and whatnot in the Rosebud, Zuccarino. They come from a different form. Um, that's my little query of best of Bordeaux at the price, so um, I think he's the danger. But Natuno draws perfectly here. He had to draw a barrier, Natuno. He does so much wrong. There's enough pressure in this race. If best of Bordeaux or a couple of others, Swiss Exile from out wide, cross Natuno, he can get that card in. They've tried to educate him from two trials. So they've sna- oh, two trials and a jump out. They pulled him back, and he's overdone it. He just He's just a nutcase. Hmm. Um, but I think he's so talented. I think he can – if he learns to settle, he can win a Golden Rose. Um, it just – yeah, just a query. So I, I think Barry Six, Hugh Bowman, soft hands, perfect jockey booking, can get him to settle a bit better. If he's crossed, so be it. And I think he can win. So he's my bet in the race. Well, his, his performances have been when leading. So that's that's the question mark. Correct. Because he'll probably have to take a sit. And if he's not done it under race day pressure, if he's if he's been keen in the past, then is he has he furnished enough in the break to be able to do that? I could punch a little hole in him in terms of the form around him. Yep. Like he obviously beat She's a Belter in the Ken Russell who went on to win a group one, but that was short of her best. And the runner up there midnight in Tokyo is, you know, won an off season two year old handicap and, and failed in the silver yeah, shadow. I don't think midnight in Tokyo is great form. No, no. Nah. So I could punch holes in the form, but that certainly does look to have an engine and, and there does look to be good speed. So if ever you're going to settle taking a sit, it's with Hugh Bowman on, on the back of some good tempo, but yep, not for me, mate. Fair enough. Well, I can't let Natuno go around at six six fifty without something on, just because I think he's such a talented horse. So one to keep an eye on for the future. Something we're doing a little bit differently before we get to our best bets and wrap up uh, salts is a bit of betfair one hundred and one or or gambling or betting one hundred and one. Um, some education about what we do. I just want to start this series of little education snippet, minute or two, um, about how you go about dissecting the form what's the first thing you look at so just a bit of your process um and i'll put some input in as well so mm-hmm. when when the fields come out 10 o'clock on wednesday what's the first thing you do when you look at the form yeah well before i even open the fields and, and have a look i look at what the weather's going to be doing and, and where the rail is and then go through past meets as well so what what was the previous rail position how did it race is it is it moving further out is it moving back and then I have a look at historical data for that particular rail position to try and just get my head around how the track might play. Now we know predicting track bias is actually harder than finding a winner itself, <laughs> but it certainly goes a long way, particularly the conditions. Have you like, got a database on, on track patterns and stuff? Yes. Yeah. 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 
Yeah, so that's that's very handy because they particular rail positions, there might be outliers, but there's gen, generally a good bracket of data to say that this is probably how it's going to play. Like for example, last week Rose Hill a drying track seven meters. I know the grass was longer to the outside. That's what Tommy Berry said, but it still usually plays fence in run like six meters. But so this weekend, like I looked at the weather and, and even since looking at, on Wednesday for Caulfield, for example, we had a lot more rain yesterday than expected. It's gone down to a heavy eight, but the track conditions and, and how I think the track might play is, yep. is my first point of call. And then I'll go through the fields. Yeah. So I, I'm spot on. I'm the same with you. Look at weather, look at track pattern. Look at the wind at Caulfield's very, yeah. um, very important as well. So they're the factors. When I look at a race, I generally look at the conditions of the race, the weights and handicap ratings and stuff like that. So you, yeah. you obviously you go through, you look at the distance, you have a glance over the field and then you look at the weights and the, the style of race and, and whether it's a handicap, whether it's a way for age or a quality or whatever. Yeah. Well, that's interesting because the, it just goes to show that there's a lot of different ways to skin a cat because when I'm looking at a race... I'll virtually never, I know I, I noted Elation was an 84 rater at weight for age. Like that's yep. a, a real glaring one, but I never really look at how the horse is in relevant to its benchmark rating. Yep. I just look at what the weight adjusted figure would be with that particular weight. Yep. Like if a horse is in on the minimum with 54, but it should have 48, but with 54 kilos, it's past times and sectionals and data says that, Hey, this can actually run a, an overall figure that wins this race. I don't really care that it should have six kilos less. I'll just do the yeah. race based on that approach sort of thing. Yep. So yeah, there's, but there's lots of ways and, and there's ways like how you discuss, you do the race. There's plenty of times you'll be right. And mm. the horse was just uh, poorly weighted to its handicap and, and didn't, didn't run up to the weight that it had to carry. Yeah. And you obviously you weight that differently pending race, but if obviously it's a handicap, if it's a Phillies versus Colts or whatever, you just look at the weight scale of the mm. race. So don't take it. It depends on how much you weight that that factor, but um, and then I go into speed maps, which we can touch on next week, and what a good speed map looks like. So that's generally the first starting point when I dissect the field, look at the weight conditions, the distance, tracks, and weather. And then I go into a speed map, and you do the same. Agreed. Yeah, and yep. and we'll both talk about that next week in a lot more detail because I place a lot of importance on the on the tempo of the race. Yep. Look yep. forward to that next week. Let's get to the best bets and best lays for the weekend. You can go first, Salts. Uh, my best bet comes in the Cockrum Caulfield race seven, number seven, passive aggressive as touched on previously. She's four from four for a reason. Her jump out between runs. She's only 67 days off the jump out at Cranbourne on a wet track was absolutely outstanding. She'll go forward. She's got residual fitness. And the thing that I love about her and, and probably the thing that I love most in a horse is every single time she stepped onto the racetrack. She's improved on her previous rating. So that's what we coin an upward spiral. And she's still on it. And for five, for five in a row on an upward spiral, I, I think she'll bring up the picket fence. There you go. Best bet there. Your best lay we touched on earlier as well. Yeah. Caulfield race six, number four in the boat. Just the one jump out on the synthetic over a thousand meters at Warnable. His racing style means that you need to be hard fit. I respect him as a horse because I absolutely adore his racing style. He goes forward and tries to bust him up. The win at uh, Sale in that, yes, the that discovery was a, was a beauty. Well, Lombardo coming out of that one in group one. So he's a good horse, but his racing style means he needs to be rock hard fit. And the wet track is a bit of a query as well. There you go. I tend to agree with you. I'm happy to be against it in the boat. But my best bet, Rose Hill race two, number two, Frumos, short and sweet. Moral beaten last start. The track pattern we keep harping on. Just beat it. Bowman had to get too far back on Frumos last start and couldn't find a run. A lot of people potting Bowman that day. Yeah, well, uh, you're potting him or you're potting the way the track plays? You have to pot the track. Oh, I saw a, a great question on social media the other day. Would you rather be three wide, no cover, or ride for luck on the fence? So I think that's a good good question. I think if he pulled wide in the straight, he wins anyway. Yes. So that's the little query, but yeah. the way the track just it was only away. it was only races thereafter where a couple had made ground, so he hadn't quite seen it. Yet. Picked, Maybe he that picked had up happened. the bias before yeah. everyone else did as yeah, well, which yeah. is probably to his detriment. There, he yep. had no luck. Um, 
So race two, number two, Fremos, $2. Happy to take that short and sweet. Just wins. Moral beaten last start. Almost a moral today. I think Artie Zora can place in the same race. This horse was off fence, same race. Um, really good run. Trialed enormously prior to that, Artie Zora. So something to follow there in that race. Laying, I'm laying those in the feature race. As I said, three laying or two laying. Elation, Alligator Bud, I'm Thunderstruck. I'm happy to build a book around them. If I get it right, I will be having a good day. So you be rolling in it. Come on, Sap Dancer <laughs> and Cascadian. So that's my plays on Saturday, mate. Thanks for joining me. Been a pleasure. Well, that's a gutsy lay because you, you want to just get one right and keep a streak, but you've got to get three from three in one week just well, to keep a one streak. You just, you just, only one of them can win. So you're mitigating risk yeah, a little bit, yeah. but um, I like it. Yeah, I like something it. a bit different. So yeah, there we I'm go. Off, I'm off to Caulfield tomorrow. I might see you there. I'm out in the Saturday, general public. Yep. I've got a, I've got a buck's turn at Caulfield. So I'll, I'll hope, I actually, I hope <laughs> you my might mates, not remember seeing me. I hope my mates behave because <laughs> I've got a reputation to uphold. <laughs> You'll be signing autographs <laughs> somewhere. So I love it, mate. I might come say hello. Can't wait for that. Thanks for joining us. Lay back with Beth Fair. We've got education coming up throughout the series. I can't wait to get stuck into it. We'll be back to do it all, all again next week. Gamble responsibly call 1-800-858-858.